Electric vehicles. They've always been a thing of the not so distant future. The day when motorists are liberated from their oil dependence, well, it's a day that always seems just around the corner. For example, the full electric car. General Motors pioneered it, it was called the EV. Mm. They abandoned it. Management said, who's going to buy this thing? So they canceled the EV, mm. and now who runs with this technology, right? Mm. So uh, it's a shame that the technology, a lot of it was invented in the United States, but never capitalized on. Scenes like these are common at auto shows around the world, from Frankfurt to Tokyo. Each year, the big automakers exhibit their latest hopes for EVs. But they're concept cars, vehicles that will never see the light of day and are too expensive to ever commercially produce. That leads us to wonder what's available today, right now, and what's on the horizon. Well, the technology is not that mature. That's why we don't see a lot of electric vehicles here and there, but it's beginning. In Hong Kong, your only choice is the non-air-conditioned MyCar. You can drive it on roads with a speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour or less. The government is behind the steering wheel of an iMe from Mitsubishi and plans to buy more. As for you and me, the iMe is not available to the general public until 2010. The okay, electric vehicle will be one of the key products that Mitsubishi in Japan to develop in the coming few years. In fact, the first electric vehicle have been launched in Japan since July this year. In Hong Kong, we are, have a vehicle running, test running by Hong Kong government. And next year, same time, we definitely will have 30 to 50 vehicle running in the roads of Hong Kong. Mitsubishi is also working with Peugeot on the Ion Zero Emissions electric vehicle that will be introduced at the end of 2010. Volkswagen says its much-hyped E-Up will be ready by 2013. Meanwhile, Toyota, the world's biggest car maker, plans to build a plug-in model for retail buyers in 2012. Renault has four EV concepts due for launch in 2011. 2010, however, should see greater choice for EV buyers. Mercedes-Benz, Hyundai and Riva will have electric cars on the road by the end of the year. As will General Motors, with US Treasury assistance. GM plans to build as many as 60,000 Chevrolet Volt plug-in electric cars annually starting in November. For the super wealthy, available now is the Tesla Roadster and the Roadster Sport. 0 to 60 miles an hour in under 4 seconds and twice as energy efficient as a Prius, hundreds have already been sold in the US and Europe. With Daimler, Tesla is also working on an initial test fleet of a thousand electric smart cars, which is expected to be on the road any time now. Interest in the business of EVs has also spiked. The most extreme example is mainland battery and electric car maker BYD. United States billionaire investor Warren Buffett bought 10% of the company and shares rocketed sixfold in 2009. Its owner overnight became the richest man in China. The truly interesting thing is that although Wang Chuan Fu has said he wants to build BYD into the world's biggest car company by 2025, the company is yet to start commercial production on a pure electric vehicle. Yet, in a place where private vehicle ownership is only for the well-off, your chance of riding in an EV may be limited, even if they do become popular. However, one startup hopes to democratize EVs by bringing the technology to taxis. Ogo's mission is to put electric cars on the road. Our main project right now that we're working on is to convert Hong Kong's taxi fleet, which currently runs on gas, to electric. So Ogo will provide cars and the charging solution. Taxis were earlier this decade fitted with LPG, but the government told us that replacing current models with EVs is not a priority. If you really want to get behind an EV right now, your only chance may be Audi's e-tron car. Drivers can take it for a spin in this PlayStation game.